I just like to review this. I get this question all the time. But this is pretty simple. If I look at my computer screen as I'm sitting in front of it writing a program, the top of the screen is over on that side of my machine, while the bottom of the screen is on this edge of the machine. The left side of the screen is also the left side of my machine. And the right side machine is the right side. That's, e that's easy. The long axis is X and the short axis is Y. So if I look at my, my setup here, this is what it looks like on my, on my screen. And I've darkened the lines with some red pencil so we can see that this zero, what's they call it, XY origin, is on the right side of the part and at the bottom of the part. So that means it would be on this back side, the right side of the part, and this is at the bottom of the part. So now we just got to find that point. I did this recently with a mechanical edge finder on the last drawers, actually. This is the pan drawer. I did the, the, the uh, appliance drawers. I used my mechanical edge finder. The beauty of that system, it's, it's less than 20 bucks. If you buy a name brand like Starrett, you're going to spend 50 Name brands are usually worth it because they're a little bit more precisely built, a little bit better quality. But all it had to do was come up against the side, and as the two cylinders lined up, as it got close to the edge, then they seemed to be one cylinder. And then as soon as you went past that center point, then the bottom section would move, it would jump off, the spring would hold it in place, but you would still see it jump, and then you knew where you were, back up one thousandths of an inch very accurate way to set up a part. I've been doing that since the 1980s when I started machining. So a long time. Beauty of it, inexpensive. Okay, now you have to make a compensation and the system I'm going to show you today, you still have to make a compensation. But if your eyesight's failing like mine or it's not quite as good as it has been, seeing that shift in the other mechanical edge finder bothers you or is hard then I'm going to set up a system here that's going to give you a beep and a light. So it's going to be easy to see and easy to hear. So give me just a second to get everything set up, and we'll show you how we use this newer edge finder. So this is what the new edge finder looks like. I've got it set up in my tool holder, and if I just move that just a slight bit, we get a light and a beep. So the job is going to be to bring it to the back side of the material, jog it forward slowly until it hits, and when it beats, I know I've found the edge. And I'll do the same on this side. Now on the mechanical edge finder, the tip was 0.2 inches in diameter. So all I had to do was minus or add an, a tenth of an inch, and I was good to go. This is a 6 millimeter little ball on the end. So that's six millimeter, that's 236 thousandths. So the offset would be half of that, or 118. So there's an introduction to this edge finder. I'll give you a link to this. I picked it up on Amazon. All right, I'm going to set it up now. Now I've honed my machine, warmed up the spindle. We're going to go to the vertical table. My x-axis y fixed fence, that's the first offset. The reason I went to the screen first was just to go to the tool page. If I want to go here and type in tool 12, of course, tool 12 doesn't exist. I have only seven tools on my automatic tool chain. So this system already knows to come to the front of the machine to get the tool I give it when I do that. So I'm going to say, um, pick up my tool. My warm-up tool is being put away. That's the noise you hear back there. And now the machine's right behind me and ready for me to put the tool in. So to do that, I'm simply going to sit, release the tool on the button on the screen and get out of the way. Release tool right there. Then I hit the clamp tool and then I hit the arrow so it knows that I'm through with the tool change. So if I go look up here on the tool in spindle, the DRO, I've got to get my hand out of the way. The DRO says 12, so that's the tool that it knows is in there. Tools in place, we're ready to 
jog it into place and find my edges. So I'm going to go to the control screen. You can't see that, but I'm going to change the jog feed rate to 20% and hit enter. So when I move in the Y axis over here, it moves relatively slowly. I want to sneak up on that. I don't want to crash into it. So now I'm so the 20% lets me move a little slowly. Well, I guess pretty good there. So now I'm sitting about in the middle of the part on this side. I'm going to bring it up until it touches that edge. So I, at this point, I am going to go to step jog. We're going to jump back to the screen so you can see where I'm at. I know this has got a little flicker, but that's all right. So we're in the control screen here. We're going to step jog. That's highlighted. And by using these plus and minus arrows, I can move it to bigger steps or smaller steps. Right now I'm at point one, which is about the biggest step I want to take at this point. I'm going to move along the y-axis, and just like I was saying, if we're looking at the screen on the computer, up is across the machine, the far side, and down is to the close side. So up is going to take me closer to my material, down is going to take me away. So I'm going to use those tools as I bump in and get closer. Okay, so. I'm going to use those step jog and I'm going to use the up arrow on the Y axis and move it one tenth of an inch at a time. We can do a couple more of those. Now we're really close. I'm going to use the minus arrow on the screen to get to smaller step. This is going to be ten thousandths at a time. Now I'm really close. So I'll go to one. There we go. I'm going to back off a couple of steps until the light goes. And so you can see I'm right on the ragged edge there. So I'm going to go to my offset on my Y. I'm going to zero that. Then I'm going to take it out of step jog, raise it up so I don't bump into anything. I'm going to go back to step jog. So my probe was sitting at 0 0.001, and then I got up to the edge and touched it. Now I need to move so the center, half the ball width, I need to move forward or to the up arrow here. But I can go into my offs or my steps, and I can actually put a precise step in that I want. So 118 is half of the 236 diameter of the ball. So if I change that to 118 and then hit my up arrow, then I am right on the center line. And then all I need to do is hit zero and I'm good to go. Now I repeat the same thing on the back side, which would be the X axis. So we're going to go do that. So let's just talk about this for a minute. Nifty little tool, the downside, like I said, I still have to put in the offset of the ball. But it finds the edges, and because I get the beep and the light, it's really easy for me to do my job. So it's on Amazon. It's less than 150 bucks. So a good deal more expensive than $20, and you operate exactly the same way. But it has the advantage of the sound and the light, so it's really hard to make a mistake.